What's up everybody? My name is Russ. RWG Research is my website. Alright, so this is actually officially a popper update. This is number 20, okay? I think I looked, it was uh, like uh, December 2nd or 15th or something when I posted a video about the popper. I have been playing with this. I have been live. You can see in the background I still got my stuff up. Um, I took a choice today to do this instead of what I probably should have been doing because I've been itching, 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 itching. Just, ah, I gotta get out of here and do some tests. So I got the pop timer circuit hooked up to the coils, hooked up to the popper. Um, I'll explain that here in a second. I've got two capacitors hooked up to the charge circuit and um, yeah, just for some simple tests, I wanted to try some stuff. So really quickly, I'll give you a, a quick run through and then I'll go into this. Um, I have been progressing on the forums with a bunch of people, okay? And a lot of these people um, have really great ideas and we've pro slowly been progressing. Um, and actually, everything still kind of falls back to the PAP timer circuit here. Really quickly, I want to explain to you why I made this, okay? Originally, I made this so that the wasted energy of, of length of time that I fire this thing, I, sh I want to be able to fire it for a short period of time and that's it. I want to go pop and be done. And I do that because I'm trying to save the amount of energy in the capacitors. Um, we really think that we need this short duration pulse. We've been deriving that information out of the forums discussions for a while. We need this short pulse to, to actually make this thing fire. Probably not going to explain it very well because I'm in a little bit of a hurry today to try to get this stuff done really quickly. I want to show you guys a few things. Um, but that's kind of what it comes down to. So most of you are probably going to ask me about the popper kit. Um, it kind of just poof. That's it. That's all I got for you. Popper kit's done. Um, so back to research on everything else. Um, yeah, so there you go. I know you guys are going to ask me about it and there, there's your answer. Um, so back to this. Um, basically, an individual uh, by the name of Heinz Klosterman, as you've uh, probably looked into PAP research, you found him. He's got a patent. Um, I've talked to him a few times, um, and he posted a um, schematic um, on Facebook, I believe, that that resembled, um, as well as what you saw in his videos, that resembled using a short pulse duration. And that's what the PAP timer was originally, in my head, I wanted to be able to make that short pulse duration. Now, unfortunately for me, um, learning every day, I didn't really design in a charging portion of the circuit for this timer circuit. So I, I, in order to use my original device and how I had it set up, I have to go back and actually configure that a little differently and make sure that I can uh, remove the power when I fire this thing. Now interestingly, today I'm not removing power and I can fire it and nothing gets hot and over, overcharges. So I'm going to show you guys that I was quite impressed today with what happened, so all that will be coming up after uh, after I get done explaining. So anyway, Heinz posted this diagram, I will post it on the forums, and you guys look at it, and basically it's exactly what I was trying to do with the PAP timer circuit, was use short pulse duration. Now, um, if you look at the diagram, there's some really interesting things going on with it, uh, I don't necessarily agree with all of it, but one thing he's, he's doing is controlling the rate at which the power is applied to the gap. So you just want this teeny tiny amount of discharge power in a, a whatever increment, okay? So that's kind of what I've been working up to even when I got done building the PAP timer circuit here. That's what's been progressing. You can actually read it through the forms. You can see that's kind of what the thing is. So upcoming, I will be having a... Um, PAP adventure basically where I'm going to be going through all of the tests that we have derived from the forms. There's like a five or six page document with tests that we've been uh, accumulating. Uh, Easy's actually put together the sheet for me. Thanks for doing that, Easy. Um, and basically I want to run through all of those tests. I want to try different configurations. I want to do all this. But I want to get a set system to where it works really well and then use that as my base platform and constantly do those tests with that configuration and don't change it. So I got a little work to do before I can do that, but that's what I want to do. Um, also on the Neutron detectors, yes, I got enough funding to buy them. Thank you guys so much. Um, so I will be getting them, but I have to wait until I get all of this set up and ready to go for the multiple different tests, okay? The reason I have to do that is because I need to be able to 
verify a ground point where everything's base level and then <clears throat> try my tests over time <clears throat> excuse me and um, I'll come up with answers that I'm looking for now the other reason is is because the actual neutron detectors um, they last for like three months great shape and then up to a year there they should work fine then after that it's kind of flaky so I did not want to buy them and then let them sit for six or eight months and then use them I wanted to be fresh and test right away that way I know there's no flaws and we'll have our answers on neutron detection yes that's what I'm doing I definitely am still doing that but uh, it's slow progress and yeah life comes first now before we get started, I want to explain the other stuff, but what's really cool is I'm going to show you guys something here, all right, and basically this is my new toy. This is, this was thrown out, I um, mean, it it's flaky, you know, and uh, it was thrown out, I dug it out of the dumpster, and what this is, is a, I think they call it an L L T R V. oh, I don't remember the name exactly, Honeywell makes it, I'll give you, I'll give you the tag right here. Here is the tag. Man, that lighting is fantastic. Okay, so what this actually is, is a measuring device. Okay, now why am I excited about this? Because I actually want to put this on top of the popper and measure the distance that it travels. I'm going to have to find a good way to attach it, okay, because it's just got a ballpoint end on it. And if I just set it on top, it's going to fire this thing into the back side. It's going to break it. Okay? You can see it's been, it's been smashed back here. It's got a little dings and dents. It's been hammered on. But I checked it, and it works. I cleaned it really well. That probably helped. I will show you how this works. Basically, there is an output on this thing, and it will give you a 0 to 5 volt or negative 5, 0 to 5 volt, so centering it would be uh, 0. This would be negative 5 volts, and that would be positive 5 volts. Or you can configure it to set it all the way at the point is 0, all the way at the top is 10 volts. Okay. Now you have to supply this thing a, um, it's got an exciter in it, you have to supply this thing a um, signal, 24 volts up to 60 volts, I think, and that's, that excites the element in here, and then you can read your feedback signals. Okay. That's actually how this works. I'm going to show you with the oscilloscope, actually watching it move on there, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'll get that hooked up for you, and I will show you how that works. So this is actually an $800 sensor, okay? It works very similar to a load cell, where it's got an exciter in it. Um, so I don't know how sensitive the um, feedback cable is, so I'm going to have to really shield this, and I'm going to have to run it up and over everything else. But I really want to do this in a scientific manner, but in order to do it in a scientific manner, I gotta have a lot of really expensive things, and I just don't have them. All right. So I will show you that here in a moment. All right. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so I told you I'd show you how this works. I'm going to try to hold this back here far enough so that you can actually see it move. Okay? And you watch watch what happens in the oscilloscope. I've got this hooked up to 24 volts and DC ground. See that? So I can zoom in a little bit more. We'll go one more. Okay, so no matter where this is located, it follows my path. Now you may be asking, well, how can I record this? Well, I can record on this oscilloscope, so every time I fire it, I have to record it, and I'll see, I'll see that right there, okay, that little peak, okay, and then I can go in here and I can measure that, and that will tell me exactly how far that this piston moved okay this one is calibrated to be one well the one that came originally I have to recheck this one but this 1.6460 volts per inch 
Okay, that's pretty darn accurate. Now, if I had a analog data logger, which I would like to get, okay, I could actually, I could actually have recordings of this stuff and get some uh, transducers and actually measure current. Okay, so that's that's how that little device works. Now. One other thing that I have, and I have taken these out of uh, drives and stuff, is these little type of inductor transducers. I have some big fork truck ones that may work really well, but I don't think the voltage is high enough. So basically what these are is just inductors, um, coils wrapped around a, a round ferrite bead, I believe is what they normally are. Some of these have hall sensors, but I don't think these do. And I can run my power wires through here and I can actually check the DC and AC signals coming in and I can measure that. Now that's something that I would like to incorporate but I, right now I'm pretty sure I don't have any of these that are high enough ratings. These aren't, these aren't big enough for what I want. So there you go. That's how this, this thing works right here. And it's, it's pretty darn cool. I'm back it out one. And it's it's as fast as as you're gonna get. Okay. All right. That's it. Moving on. Ah. Okay. Really quickly, I want to show you guys the setup here that I have. Um, again, the pop timer circuit is connected to the two ignition coils just like update number 19 didn't change anything it's all the same and it's connected to a singer, single trigger alright so basically when I fire this thing this is what I get okay so what I have here is I just happen to have some titanium rods laying around so I went ahead and I grabbed them Okay, here they are. This is titanium rods, and these are the tungsten carbon or tungsten uh, thoriated electrodes. Okay, all quarter inch, so they still fit in here nicely. So I have those, these two connected to the capacitors. The capacitors are connected to my charge box. Charge box has the um, control transformer and the variac. I'm just using it for charging functions. That's it, not firing functions. Um, I have this sitting up here to discharge my capacitor safely. It's the only resistor I had out here right now. I brought everything in the house. Um, so yeah, that's the general setup. So now I'm going to fire this stuff away and we're going to see what happens. Now later in the footage, I actually don't connect. Um, I, I, I leave the charger on and fire this thing as many times as I can and everything stays cool. Believe it or not, the only thing that got hot was this MOSFET, which is still warm. And the main reason it got hot was because the fan quit working. I locked it up. So anyway, um, so I was I was absolutely amazed that that was that 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 worked out that way. That stuff stayed cool. So very interesting. I'm excited to get more more into this um, again. We are rolling. Fifty volts. Here goes another. scared the crap out of me. Right, now I'm actually going to raise this to 500 volts. That went down to 88 volts just for pure reference. Um, make sure my camera's rolling, I'm good. So 88 volts, 89 volts, 90 volts. So let's, uh, 
I want to go to 500 volts. Because that's what uh, Heinz was referencing. It's 500 volts DC. So there we go. 500 volts. Stop my charger. See if we can get it to go bang. Scares me every time. All right, let's see how many volts we got left. 106. So let's let's charge it back up. 500 volts. I'm just gonna keep pressing it and see if we can finally get it to fire. I love the popper. <laughs> it's a fun device. 100 volts exactly. Charge it again. 500 volts. Now we're getting better at it. I got it set just right, I guess. I actually pulled the delay down so it made it shorter. Let's see how many volts we got now. 103. Charge it back up. Fire it again. Ninety eight volts. Charge it back up. Fire it again. So it does work. That is excellent. This is a such a simpler circuit. All right. So now I've got two small electrodes to make sure um, mm, they, uh, they're going into the capacitor. See, I had this problem last time. You know, I did. I had this exact problem. So, well, let's, uh, let's charge it up. I'm going to go to a higher voltage this time. I think I can go to 750 comfortably. There, I'm maxed out. 624. Let's drop it back down to about 620. All right, we're just gonna have to play with it. Here we go. Hundred and twenty three volts. Let's charge it back up. Try it again. Firing. 
And it scares me every time. So right now I'm getting a an arc across all the electrodes. So All right, same thing. I'm just going to see what we can get here. Let's charge it up. 720 volts. Let's see if we can get it to fire. Hundred and thirteen volts. Charge it back up. Hundred and twenty two volts. Firing. All righty, so what I've got right now is basically the circuit is on charge all the time. I'm not even removing power whatsoever. I'm just going to continue firing this basically as many times as it will. So here we go. My MOSFET hotter than snot. But the wires are cold. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, interesting. That's a little close, huh? Well, this is interesting. Um, I'm actually I have charge on all the time, and let's see what the voltage is. Voltage is, well, it's fully charged because I have the charger on, 620 volts. I have <clears throat> just two capacitors, and they're just connected to the popper. And uh, this thing just sporadically fires, um, kind of whenever it wants, basically. So I'll do it a few more times with the camera at a different angle here.
was that? I'm going to stop charging and try to fire it one last time here. 620 volts. Oh, that dropped down to 70 volts. Alright, so I am very curious. I'm going to discharge these. We stop that and I'm going to check the temperature of this stuff. That's, that's just barely warm. Capacitors are cold. Charge wires. Transformers cold. Redirected fire is cold. I can't believe that. That is unbelievable how how cold stuff is. And the electrodes actually look great. It's just barely warm. I can't believe that. That, that really has a totally different effect on things compared to what I what I did last time. I mean everything's ice cold. Granted it's um, just for pure video reference it is right at about 50 degrees. Which feels pretty good out here compared to what it has been. It's been way too cold. Um, so yeah I'm going to check the frequency of this with my oscilloscope because I want to know if there's something special about the frequency. So I'm going to check that and uh, pretty interesting how stuff is cold. I, I, I don't get that. Alright, well, this is Russ with RWGResearch.com. That's been a popper update. I really hope to get more accomplished, but I can only take it one day at a time. And, uh, yeah, I don't really want to be out here in the cold all the time. Um, I'm cold at work all day, and I'm tired of being cold. <laughs> so, anyway, hopefully it's warming it up. Springtime's coming. It's going to be so much nicer. I do have that little one coming. We'll see how it fits in the schedule, but I really do plan on still making progress, and we'll see what happens, okay? So well, that's it. Have a good day, guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you later. Peace and love to you all. See ya.